you are not ready for your GCSE chemistry exam unless you review these must know definitions or what we call like a vocabulary list. So what is this exactly? These are terms or definitions that you have to know before the exam and they are so important. The reason they're so important is that these questions when they come in the exam, they are direct. There's nothing, nothing tricky about it. So if you don't get these questions correctly, then you're really losing what I call free marks. <laughs> Do not lose free marks. So definitely review these definitions. I will be providing you with a PDF of these definitions. So definitely review them before your exam. So 79 definitions, very easy. You have to understand them. You have to uh, know what to write exactly. And they come in two flavors. Number one, they may come as a direct question that says, Hey, define what's known by, known by diffusion. Or hey, define what's known by equilibrium. That's one style, which you just write the answer, which I provided to you in the PDF, so you don't have any excuse. It's an easy question. The second style is a multiple choice style. So they ask you, you know, which of the following statements are, are correct, and you have four answers. So I'm gonna review those 79 terms, and I'm gonna tell you which one appears more likely as a definition, like straightforward definition, and which one is more likely to come as a multiple choice exam. So number one is diffusion. Very easy, particles move from, you know, randomly in, in from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration until they are, uh, you know, evenly distributed. Very easy question. You usually in a, a written format because the multiple choice format um, will usually ask about like the effect of temperature and the effect of mass upon diffusion. So definition of diffusion is more likely to be a written question, straightforward, nothing tricky. The second definition, number two, solvent. What is a solvent? This is a substance that dissolves a solute. Example is water, ethanol, most common examples. So that's number two. Number three, definition of solute, a substance that is dissolved in a solute. So a solute is like your sugar, your salt, a solid that dissolves in a solvent. Number four, solution. So solution is a mixture. It's two things, two or more things. So it's a mixture of one or more solute dissolved in a solvent. An example, seawater. It's a solution. Solution of a salt. Solution of sodium chloride. Number five, solubility. So what is solubility? Now, uh, number five is common and I've seen students, guess what? I've seen students lose mark on number five. So guys, do not miss this definition. Is the definition of solubility and it's the amount of solute dissolved in 100 grams of a solvent at a given temperature. So what do students forget? Students forget 100 grams of solvent. You've got to have a specific amount of solvent. You cannot just dissolve in a random uh, amount of solvent. Otherwise, you don't have a specific solubility, right? I mean, the more solvent you have, the more you can dissolve. If you have a big amount of water, I don't have water here, but if you have a big amount of water, you can dissolve a lot of sugar, a lot of salt, right? If you have small amount of water, you're not gonna be dissolve, able to dissolve the same amount. So you really have to specify the volume and it's 100 grams, okay? So you've gotta remember this number. The other piece that people forget is at given temperature. Students forget at given temperature. This is really important and it's worth one mark. Guys, do not forget this one thing because it's worth one mark. And the importance is that if the temperature is higher, you will be able to dissolve more solute, okay? So if you're just dissolving salt at room temperature or if you're dissolving sugar at room temperature, you cannot dissolve very much. But if you heat it up, you'll be able to dissolve more sugar, okay? So try it at home. Uh, of course, with your parents' permission, and try to dissolve some sugar at a low temperature at a cold water, okay? And try to dissolve uh, same amount of water, but hot water, and you'll be able to dissolve more sugar, okay? Try it. Anyways, so number six. So number six is saturated solution. This is a solution that contains the maximum concentration of a solute dissolved in a solvent at specific temperature. So if you don't say specific temperature, you lose a mark. Again, same thing, very common. I see a lot of students miss this point. So saturated solution is a solution that cannot dissolve anymore at a specific temperature. All right, number seven, residue. So residue is the substance that remains after evaporation, distillation, 
or filtration of any similar or any similar process basically most commonly is filtration when you do filtration and you filter out something a mixture the residue is the substance that did not dissolve and it stayed over all right so that is number seven not very common i've not seen it very much in exams number eight filtrate filtrate is the liquid that it passes through the filter also not very common as a question that's direct the fine filtrate they usually don't ask the fine filtrate but they can ask you to label the filtrate or to identify the filtrate this is the some the thing that is soluble that passes through the filter paper into the other side all right number nine crystallization this is the process in which crystals form as you cool off a saturated solution so if you have a really saturated solution uh, for example hot water that dissolved a maximum amount of sugar and you leave it to cool sugars will crystallize okay try it at home this is something you can do at home and i teach my students to actually do it at home. watch their moms actually do it in the kitchen so definitely try that out now one of the, this is not a definition but it's kind of a calculation that you should know which is the rf value common question uh, they may ask you to calculate the RF value, which is a chromatography experiment. And this is basically distance traveled by the spot divided by distance traveled by the solvent. They may ask you to write the calculation or to calculate it yourself. All right. So number 10 definition of an element. It's, it's a pure substance containing only one type of atom and cannot be split into anything similar. Now, an example of element is what? Hydrogen, H2, O2, that's an element. It doesn't contain anything else. It's just oxygen, all right? Uh, Cl2, this is an element. Now, question, is H2O an element? No, H2 is a compound because H2O has hydrogen and oxygen. It has more than one type of an element, okay? So elements has only one type of an atom. Number 11, 11, okay, 10 plus 1, 11. Okay, compound. Compound contains two or more atoms chemically bonded together. Example is water, H2O, carbon dioxide, CO2. It's a compound. It has more than one element. Sodium chloride, NaCl. It has more than one thing. So that's the de so that those were examples of compound. Now, uh, the definition of element and compound usually appear as a direct question. Very easy. Define element or what's meant by element. Define compound. Uh, or explain why um, CO2 is a compound and you're going to just say, oh, it contains more, uh, it contains two different atoms. It contains carbon, it contains oxygen and they're chemically bonded together. Um, so question, uh, definition number 12 is mixture. Mixture contains two or more substances that are not chemically bonded, not chemically combined. Example, air. Air is a mixture of oxygen and nitrogen and they're not bonded together okay they're just uh, every the oxygen and the nitrogen are free to move and they're separate from each other then they're not bonded together okay so that's an example of mixture uh, definition number 13 definition of a molecule molecule is a unit of two or more atoms bonded together all right so cl2 is a molecule h2 is a molecule we only call molecule we only call covalent molecules as molecules we do not call ionic compounds as molecules because ionic compounds are not molecules i see this problem a lot please students do not call ionic compounds as molecules they're not molecules they're latest they are like hundreds and thousands of, of ions that are in a lattice, in a giant structure. They do not form individual units, all right? So this is really important. Number 14, definition of atomic number. Atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom. So if this question comes as worth two points, make sure you write both things. It's the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom okay so if it's worth one point then then really when when you if you miss the word nucleus of an atom is fine but if it's worth two points really important to write the whole definition definition number 15 nucleon number and this is the total number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of the atom okay right in the nucleus of the atom all right definition of isotopes now definition of atomic number and nuclear number not common but i cannot imagine a chemistry student who doesn't know atomic number and nuclear number otherwise how did you even go through the rest of the syllabus right um 
I mean, it's it's like the basics of chemistry. Now, the next one is a really, really, really common one. So pay attention. Definition number 16, isotopes, very common question, sometimes worth two marks. And it's the different atoms. They are different. Isotopes are different atoms, not the same atom, different atoms of the same element, not different atoms, sa elements, same element that have the same number of protons. That's why they're the same element but different number of neutrons. You could also say they have the same atomic number, but different mass number. Same thing, you, get, you still get the marks if you, if you change the words a little bit. Now, this question is common as a written question, direct question, just define isotopes, what's meant by isotopes, or very common in multiple choice questions. So you've got to pay attention, multiple choice questions, love, love, love asking about isotopes. This is number 16. Number 17, also an important and common question, define ionic bonding. This is the transfer, not sharing, it's the transfer of electrons from a metal to a non-metal uh, forming strong electrostatic attractive forces between oppositely charged ions and they are arranged in a giant lattice structure that's why guys i say ionic compounds are not molecules they are not molecules okay uh make sure this sticks to your head very important i don't want to see this mistake all right so uh definition of ionic bonding may come in a written question or it may also come in a multiple choice and when it comes in multiple choice like they try to trick you into you know maybe uh talking about shared electrons there's no shared electrons in ionic compounds it's a transfer complete transfer the calcium the sodium the potassium any metal completely gives away those outermost electrons and gives it away completely to the non-metal and the non-metal just happily accepts those electrons all right so that was ionic bonding number definition number 18 covalent bonding and this is the sharing of electrons so examiners like infusing or like testing students on the difference between ionic and covalent and so covalent bonding are formed when a pair of electrons is shared between two non-metals leading to a noble gas electronic configuration so non-metals share electrons all right and it's between non-metals there's no metals in this story again examiners like testing students uh, um, for the difference between ionic and covalent very common question all right, definition number 19 is alloys. Alloys are a mixture. It's a mixture, 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 guys. It's not a compound. Alloys are not a compound. I've seen this mistake where students, uh, it's, it, it once came as a multiple choice question and students chose a compound. Alloys are not a compound. It is a mixture of a metal plus another element. This other element could be a metal or could be a non-metal. For example, in steel, we have iron plus carbon, which is a non-metal. All right. So this question may come as a written question, direct question, define alloys or multiple choice questions where they ask you which of the following is the correct definition or the correct description of alloys and guys do not choose a compound because in alloy there's no chemical bonding between the two metals or the metal on the other element it's a mixture they're mixed together all right Definition number 20, not very common, define lattice. You need to understand what's a lattice. A lattice is a giant structure. It's a regular, it's a giant structure in which particles are arranged regularly. That's it. Examples are two examples in your syllabus. Number one is ionic bonding, like the salt you have in your kitchen. Go to your kitchen, get go to your cabinet, get salt. Salt that you have in the, in the cabinet is sodium chloride, NaCl. It is regularly arranged particle forming giant structure it's called lattice the second example of a lattice thing or a lattice structure are metals metals form lattice now guys i've seen students who say that macromolecules are lattice no macromolecules are not lattice macromolecules for like diamond and and um silicon four oxide are arranged tetrahedrally they're not arranged regularly and that's why they're so hard sodium chloride is brittle you can crumble the salt even more and make it powder but you cannot do this to sand or diamond right now graphite is an exception we're going to talk about graphite later it forms layer uh layers with weak attractive forces between them and that's why it is soft but it's an exception to all other macromolecules all right definition number 21 uh 21 relative atomic mass it's the average mass of atoms of an element compared to one twelfth of the mass 
of an atom of carbon 12. I've seen this definition as just straightforward written question and as a multiple choice question and you're going to choose the one that says compared to uh, an atom of carbon 12. All right, definition number 22, relative molecular mass. It's the sum of the relative atomic masses of all the atoms in a molecule. Number 23, relative formula mass. This is the um, uh, the MR or the sum of the relative masses of uh, all the, the atoms. It's used for ionic compounds. So we cannot use MR... Uh, if you have an ionic compound, you cannot call it relative molecular mass because, again, ionic compounds are not molecules. They do not form individual units. They are latest of giant structures. Okay, number 24, molecular formula. Molecular formula, for example, what is the molecular formula of water? It's H2O. What's the molecular formula of carbon dioxide? It's CO2. What does it do? It shows you the number and the type of the different atoms in one molecule. So, molecular formula of water tells you that we have two hydrogens and one oxygen molecular formula of carbon dioxide shows you or tells you that there's one carbon and two oxygen so it tells you the number how many of them and the type is it carbon is it oxygen of the different atoms in one molecule not a very common question but again these are the basics of chemistry so i cannot imagine someone not knowing this number 25 empirical formula it is the simplest whole number ratio of the different atoms or ions in a compound so for example what is the empirical formula of c2h4 it's ch2 right this is the simplest ratio two to four simplify it it's going to be one to two this is math right i mean I'm sure you guys are really awesome in math, right? Okay. All right. So empirical formula is the simplest whole number, uh, and it cannot be a fraction, of course, whole number ratio of different atoms of, uh, or ions in a compound. <coughs> number 26, mall. <laughs> People's complain, you know, it's the common complaint of all students, mall. All right. So mall is a unit amount of substance. So each six times 10 to the power of 23 number of particles, we call it a mall. All right, and, and Avogadro is a person who came up with this constant, and that's why we call it uh, this number, 6 times 10 to the power of 23, we call it Avogadro's constant. So what's your definition? A unit amount of substance. Uh, it's a unit amount of substance, and each one mol contains 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 particles, which we call Avogadro's constant. All right, number 27, Avogadro's constant, not a very common question, but you should know it. It is 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23, which is the number of particles in one mole of a substance. All right, so these are the 27 definitions related to the first four chapters of your syllabus. Now, some calculations you should be able to know. I have those calculations in the PDF that I promised to give it to you guys. It's free. Go to the website in the description under this uh, under this video. Go get those um, this PDF document. Print it physically. Guys, have the definition printed physically. Now, I know that a lot of students nowadays study digitally, but guys, trust me, the printed version is so much better all right because you have you have you have a thing to hold in your hand you have your highlighter where's my highlighter you have your highlighter to highlight you know the things that you're not sure about or you want to review again you have your pencil you're gonna circle the things that you want to review again so definitely print the uh, hard copy version that I provide in the description. Now, some calculations, they are there. Uh, right now, it's in page 107, but this may change because I regularly update my, my notes and stuff. So, um, an example of some of the calculations that you should know, should definitely know, is percentage composition, moles, how to, how to calculate moles, how to calculate volume of a gas, how to uh, calculate the concentration of a solution, in moles per decimeter cube and in grams per decimeter cube, straightforward equations. Some conversions are also there, very simple, they are very easy. And you should also be able to calculate the molecular formula from the empirical formula. Very simple, you just multiply by an integer. And last two, percentage purity and percentage yield. Again, these are easy, but you should be familiar with them. All right, back to definitions. Definition number 20, uh, okay, 20. Eight is 
electrolysis very very common definition as a straightforward question less likely as a multiple choice but very common as a straightforward question two marks free marks guys okay so electrolysis is the breakdown of an ionic compound whether it's molten or aqueous by the passage of electricity simple straightforward nothing tricky in it definition number 29 electrolyte this is a liquid or a solution that conducts electricity definition number 30 define electrode this is a solid that conducts electricity now i have not seen this definition straightforward but they may ask you to label an electrode so you're going to pick that solid that's inserted immersed into an electrolyte and label it as electrode sometimes you have to label which one is the cathode which one is the anode all right so that was definition number 30 definition number 31 conductor what is a conductor it's a solid that conducts electricity very simple Definition number 32, insulator, define insulator. It's a solid that does not conduct electricity. For example, plastic, wood, glass, rubber, any solid that does not conduct electricity, mainly non-metals. All right, definition of non-electrolyte, it's a liquid. Okay, so insulator is a solid. Ele non-electrolyte is a liquid that does not conduct electricity. Example is pure water, sugar solution. Uh, ethanol, anything covalent, oil, oil is covalent, anything hydrocarbon, anything organic, these are all non-conductors, they do not conduct electricity. Now one exception is acids, uh, ethanoic uh, or ethanoic acid or carboxylic acids, these are covalent but they're weak acids and they do conduct electricity. All right, definition number 34, electroplating, not very common question but you should know it, converting a metal object with another metal to improve appearance and to prevent corrosion or to improve the resistance to corrosion. <coughs> All right, next definition, definition number 35, exothermic reaction. So definition of exothermic reaction is that energy is released. That is a reaction in which energy is released. Uh, the reaction transfers thermal energy to the surrounding. And so the, re the temperature of the surrounding increases. If you have a thermometer, the temperature will increase. Now the opposite also may appear in exam definition number 36. Endothermic reaction is a reaction in which energy is absorbed. The reaction takes in thermal energy from the surrounding surrounding causes a decrease in temperature. So if you have a thermometer, the temperature will drop if it's an endothermic reaction. All right, definition number 37, enthalpy change. This is the transfer of thermal energy during a reaction. Definition number 38, activation energy. You should know what is an activation energy. It is the minimum energy that is required by colli by colliding particles so that they can react. Now, activation energy usually is not a direct question, like usually not a direct definition question, but what we've seen is that sometimes the examiner will ask you to show the activation energy in a diagram. And guys, it's always from the reactants to the peak, always. Reactants to peak, reactants to peak, reactants, just memorize this. And for enthalpy change, it's reactants to products, whether the products are higher or lower. That's your arrow from reactants to products. That's the enthalpy change. All right. Okay. Definition number 30, nine catalyst. Common question, sometimes straightforward question, sometimes multiple choice, but usually a straightforward question, define a catalyst. It's a substance that increases the rate of a reaction and remains unchanged at the end of the reaction. You have to put two, both points, increases the rate of reaction, remains unchanged at the end of the reaction. All right, definition number 40, photochemical reaction. Uncommon, I do not expect this question to appear because uh, in the new syllabus, it's, n it's not there, photochemical reaction, but it's a reaction in which the intensity of the light affects the rate of a reaction. The higher the intensity of the light, the higher the rate of a reaction. An example is in your organic chemistry chapter, there's a reaction called substitution. This is a photochemical reaction. If there's no light, the reaction is not going to happen. It doesn't happen in the dark. So uh, this is an example of a photochemical reaction. Another example of a photochemical reaction is photosynthesis, a reaction happening in planes. All right. <coughs> Definition number 42, equilibrium. This is a reversal reaction in which the rate of forward reaction is equal to the rate of the backward reaction and the concentration or the amounts of all substances remain the same. All right. Now, this question appeared 2020, I think, 2019, something like that. Uh, maybe 2021. Anyway, so a lot of students wrote 
something like um, <coughs> the mass of the reactants are equal to the mass of the products. That's, that's not the definition of equilibrium, okay? That's different from the fact that masses stay constant or amounts stay constant. Amounts stay constant meaning if you have nitrogen and hydrogen reacting to give ammonia and say for example at one point of time the amount of ammonia was 52 grams, okay? If you come back in, in a day, it's also going to be 52 grams. The mass of ammonia is also going to be 52 grams. Why? Because it's at, at equilibrium. The rate of forming ammonia is the same rate as breakdown of ammonia. That's very different than the wrong response that I've seen from students when they say, oh, mass of products equal mass of reactants, meaning the mass of ammonia is equal to the mass of hydrogen and nitrogen. Well, that has nothing to do with equilibrium. This is, this is a rule for all, 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 all reactions, whether or not they are at equilibrium. But if you want to say that the reaction is at equilibrium, Two things are super, super important to define equilibrium or to state or describe the features of equilibrium. Rate of reaction uh, of forward reaction equals rate of backward reaction, number one. Number two, concentration of all uh, chemicals remain the same, okay? All right, definition number 43, oxidation. Oxidation is gain of oxygen or increase in oxidation number or loss of electrons. Uh, I think just loss of electrons is enough. You do not have to write increase in oxidation number, but you can. So for example, if they say, oh, iron plus two um, change to iron plus three, what is this? It's oxidation. Why? They may ask, like, explain why. You're going to say, well, it's, uh, it's an increase in oxidation number from plus two to plus three. You can also write it's loss of electrons but you cannot write gain of oxygen because there was no gain of oxygen shown in that reaction okay definition number 44 reduction which is loss of oxygen or decrease in oxidation number or gain of electrons same thing if it's for example iron plus three was reduced to iron plus two and they said explain why you're going to say the oxidation number decreased from plus three to plus two all right definition number 45 redox it's a reaction that involves both oxidation and reduction simultaneously both are happening um for example kmno4 is getting reduced and at the same time potassium iodide is getting oxidized all right so definition number 46 oxidizing agent this is a substance that oxidizes other substances and itself gets reduced. Example, KMNO4. KMNO4 is a strong oxidizing agent. It goes and finds people and it oxidizes them. It gives them oxygen. It oxidizes them. But when it oxidizes them, itself gets reduced. The opposite can also uh, appear in your exam. Definition of reducing agent number 47. Definition number 47. Reducing agent is a substance that reduces other substances and itself gets oxidized. Example, potassium iodide. Potassium iodide goes and finds people and it reduces them. It causes them to be reduced. And when it does that, itself gets oxidized. All right. Uh, definition number 48. Define acid. Very simple, very straightforward. Guys, do not lose those two marks. Proton donor, proton donor, that's it. Sometimes one mark, sometimes two marks. Very easy, very straightforward. Define base, definition number 49. Define base, proton acceptors. And it's usually, it, usually this question does not come like straightforward. So it sometimes does, but more commonly, they will ask you like, why ammonia in this reaction was a was considered a base and you're going to say well it was a proton acceptor it accepted a proton and it became NH4 plus one you know something like that all right definition number 50 strong acid it's an acid that is completely dissociated or completely ionized in an aqueous solution example HCl completely ionizes to H plus and Cl minus uh, definition number 51, weak acid, an acid that is partially dissociated or partially ionized in an aqueous solution. An example is vinegar, which you have at home. This is a weak acid. It ionizes only partially, not completely. So most of the CH3COOH remain intact, but only some of them will ionize to ethanoate ions, CH3CO minus one and H plus. All right, next definition, definition number 53, anhydrous substance, not a very common, uh, not a very common definition question. It is a substance that contains 
no water. This is the anhydrous substance. On the other hand, hydrated substances are substances that are chemically combined with water. Now, there are two examples in the definition that you have to know, hydrated copper sulfate and hydrated cobalt chloride. So very important. Definition, definition number 54, water of crystallization. The, these are water molecules present in a hydrated crystals. And you can give examples. Examples are copper sulfate and cobalt hydrated cobalt chloride. All right, definition number 55, single displacement reactions. Uh, the definition is that the more reactive element displaces the less reactive one from its compounds. Now, this is for halogens, uh, group 7, chlorine, bromine, iodine. The more reactive halogen will displace the less reactive halogen. And it's also true for metals. The more reactive metal will displace the less reactive metal from its compound. Not a common definition but a common a very common and important concept they may ask you to write a reaction for example so you have to understand this definition definition number 56 corrosion it's an irreversible damage due to the oxidation of metal surface and definition number 57 rusting it's the corrosion of iron or steel so we only call it rusting if it's iron or steel if it's if it's magnesium or zinc or or copper we don't call it rusting we call it corrosion all right definition number 58 fossil fuels so fossil fuels are substances formed by the decay of, of plants and animals under high temperature and pressure over millions of years so uh, fossil fuels is not a super common question but if it appears it's a really easy question to answer all right th that was number 58 Definition number 59, define fuel. Fuel is any substance that provides energy. Now, most fuels require oxygen to burn. They burn in oxygen, it's a combustion reaction. Now, some fuels do not require oxygen and these were recently uh, canceled from the syllabus and uh, example of that are radioactive isotopes. They produce energy, but do not require oxygen. Again, this was canceled, but you still need to know fuels in general definition definition number 60 hydrocarbons very common question you should know it it's compounds containing carbon and hydrogen only 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 carbon and hydrogen so if you have a compound that has oxygen like ethanol like ethanoic acid these are not hydrocarbons okay common mistake but it's easy to fix right all right definition number 61 i've seen it once before it's functional group these are uh, an atom or a group of atoms that determine the chemical properties of a homologous series example oh it's called hydroxyl group <coughs> so oh makes uh the compound an alcohol another functional group is cooh this makes a compound a carboxylic acid all right Structural formula, definition number 62. Structural formula is an unambiguous description of the way the atoms in a molecule are arranged. It shows you all the bonds. Definition number 63, isomers or structural isomers. This is a common one and it appears a lot. And it, uh, these are compounds with the same molecular formula but different structural formula. I've seen it in written exams. I've seen it in multiple choice questions. It is very, very common. You have to know it and you have to be able to differentiate, like be able to recognize, oh, are these isomers or are these not isomers? So if it's isomers, they have the same molecular formula, but different structural formula, the atoms are arranged differently. Definition, definition number 64, homologous series, also a common definition, a family of similar compounds with similar chemical properties due to the presence of the same functional group these are this is homologous series they have to have the same functional group all right definition number 65 saturated compounds saturated compounds is uh when you have molecules in which all the carbon carbon bonds are single bonds no double or triple bonds they're all single bonds also a common question number 66 unsaturated compound again another uh, common question molecules in which one or more carbon uh, bond are not single bonds so they're either double or triple all right substitution reaction this is definition number 67 substitution reaction one atom or group of atoms is replaced by another atom or a group of atoms very common uh example is when uh, the h is replaced by a chlorine or a bromine this is a substitution reaction that requires light so 
it's not a common definition, but it's a common concept uh, and a common reaction that they may ask you. All right. Addition reaction. Definition number 68 is addition reaction, a reaction in which only one product is formed. Now, this question have appeared recently and I've seen students try to answer it by saying, oh, it has double bond. It has blah, blah, blah. No addition reaction is addition okay this is the thing you learned in your first grade two numbers added together to produce one number all right so addition reaction is a reaction in which one product is formed all right do not write anything else okay definition number 69 the last the very last definition is the definition of non biodegradable these are compounds that do not get decomposed by bacteria and these are problematic because they don't get decomposed and they just stay like forever and ever like plastics a very big problem so that was the last definition guys i hope you enjoyed this now there is a list of catalysts uh, in the syllabus that are listed in that same document that i'm going to send you it's in the description so go back to your description down below this video and make sure to download the pdf make sure to print it physical copy guys do not study just digitally like it's in the computer it's wonderful but have it physically printed and available on your desk hope you guys enjoyed this video i will see you in the next video bye